Hey, Gen X friends. Look at, I just came out of the shower. Um, we're keeping it casual here. So this is my reminder to my Gen Xers who are thinking of starting a YouTube channel. This is not about glamour. Nothing has to be perfect. You don't have to be all made up. This isn't the 80s anymore. So just get on there and do it. Okay, so let's talk. I, this is a sensitive subject, right? Because we're Gen Xers. I talked about latchkey kids already. And even if you weren't a latchkey kid per se, I think as Gen Xers, we had all different kinds of um, parenting or lack thereof. Some of our parents just outright ignored us and just did their own thing, carried on. And we're just like, you know, we need to do our shit. You need to get out of the way. And we were just kind of there. Um, sometimes our parents had to work three jobs, especially if you had a single parent. Um, others had parents who were kind of, we talk about how we have emotional baggage and sometimes trauma responses. Well, our parents, usually that's kind of learned behavior. And so they did, um, they usually were reactive parents. So maybe you got yelled at a lot. Maybe you got spanked. Maybe you got the wooden spoon, like with the switch, whatever it was. And then, hey, some of you out there had just completely normal parents. Um, so it's all, it's all over the spectrum for us. But I think for the most part, that's why we say we're feral is because our parents either weren't very involved, we were outside most of the time, and they kind of sent us out of sight as much as possible, or they were just like yelling at you, criticizing, they kind of sent you to your room, they were like, you know, you didn't kind of want to be around them. I saw on TikTok a trend about the pink tote mom. I don't know if you've heard of this. I didn't actually watch the original videos, but I saw videos about the pink tote mom. And what I got was it was a teenager who was on TikTok and said that her mom uh, was ye had yelled at her for not putting lids to pink tote lids um, from one room to another. And she really like made a big deal out of it. It was like a pounding on her bedroom door and the dad got involved. It was like, what the hell is going on? And they were, it was like an over the top anger reaction over these plastic tote lids. And the girl was like, I don't get it. Like she was crying and she's upset. And the reaction videos were all over the place, right? Like some people said the pink tote mom was abusive. This was um, something that happened. Usually it's triggering other people who went through this with their parents. And a lot of the ones who were responding were Gen Xers saying, yep, we grew up with this, like a mom or a dad who was super volatile and sometimes would just explode over any little thing. Um, there were therapists and psychiatrists doing their own videos, diagnosing the mom or breaking down and analyzing the behavior, saying it's displaced anger. And it's usually when somebody has like, you know, either a low emotional intelligence or their emotional cup is so full because they're traumatized and living in fight or flight that they just, any little thing makes them spill over. Then there were other ones who basically said, hey, you know what? The mom just lost her shit. And we don't know what happened before that. We don't know what else is going on in their lives. It was an unfair judgment out there that maybe this kid was pushing her buttons all day and she finally just lost her shit at the end. Or, you know, saying, hey, we all have these pink tote moments, right? Like it's sometimes our kids are going to see us when we're not at our best. We're not condoning. No one's condoning abuse. No one's condoning physical abuse or verbal abuse or emotional abuse of any kind. But sometimes you raise your voice, um, you lose your shit, or you put up strong boundaries. Like I asked you to do this and you didn't do it. I asked you three, four times. Now my voice is like up the fuck here. And it just made me think of... Gen Xers, latchkey kids, and this whole conversation about, you know, how we came to the table as parents, right? We came to parenting probably already having parented ourselves or parenting our siblings or sometimes even parenting our parents. So we're, we came sort of, I think it's almost like so un like unfair and unfortunate for Gen Xers because we came to parenting already like with our emotional cup either overflowing, overstimulated, or empty, like we didn't have any frame of reference to learn how to respond to the emotional needs of a family of children, right? Because the children are probably being 
developmentally appropriate for where they're at. Like teenagers are known to not put shit away. Like not everyone's kid is perfect. And don't even tell me out there that your kids are because every kid does their thing. And as parents, sometimes we overreact because we're already like up to here, right? We're already overstimulated or overstressed or traumatized. Trauma that we haven't worked on, healed, processed, or maybe we just didn't have good examples growing up of how to parent or how to be like in any relationship, you know, and when kids, they definitely shine them, shine the light and throw the mirror up in front of us and show us where we need to do our own self work for sure. My kids were my biggest teachers and I'm actually grateful for that. So pay attention to the buttons that your kids push in you, because usually that's not them being difficult or something's wrong with them or they're trying to make your life hell. It's that they're showing you what needs healing inside of you. But sometimes parents don't even get to that point to think this way. It's just very unconscious. So they're going to keep it being in that reactive mode. Whatever the case may be, I think that Gen X as a whole, let me know, friends, what you think needed support coming to the table as parents, right? Because I know I didn't really have a great example of it myself when I came to be a mom because I had a single mom. I was raised by a single mom who worked constantly, like three jobs, so I barely ever saw her. So I kind of raised myself, but we all know we don't raise ourselves very well. So it doesn't really give us that emotional attachment or how to be in a relationship or you know how to handle certain situations because we try to teach ourselves and sometimes you just need an adult's guidance with certain things. And then on top of that, my mom could be very critical. Uh, The conversations that we did have weren't that great. Um, So I was also probably in a state of like fight or flight all the time, cortisol high, you know, trauma response. And that leads to a lot of overstimulation. That leads to a lot of limiting beliefs that we carry into our adulthood. And when our kids come to us and they're just being kids the way they're supposed to be, right? Our parents didn't want anything to do with it, but we're like, we want to do things differently, right? This is the push and pull that we deal with in our in our hearts, right? We, we want to be there for our kids, be there more because our parents weren't there. We want to be more involved. We want to have that connection with them. We want to let them know that they're valued and that we see them, we understand them, we hear them. Um, But then at the same time, we kind of don't know how to react to some things or they're irritating. It's like nails on the chalkboard because we are already like overstimulated emotionally. So I just felt this whole, I felt it so much on everything. Like for the pink tote mom situation, it was like my heart, it pulled at my heart from all perspectives, from the mom's perspective who probably just needed support. Maybe she needed some coaching, like getting through her own trauma, managing her own emotions and emotional responses. I, my heart went out to the, to the child, to the teenager. Like I've been there where maybe you were yelled at unnecessarily or over the parent was over the top and you just were like, what the fuck? you know, or just, I don't know, like, it just felt like, oh, on all levels, this is just so gut wrenching. And another indicator that we need so much support in our society that we don't have. So then you go to we go to social media, and then everybody's put on blast. So this is just my message of love for Gen Xers today who are parents, my Gen X parents out there that we are really out here trying to really just break the generational patterns, break the trauma patterns. We're trying to break the cycle. We're trying to do things differently and do things better, but sometimes it's fucking hard. And sometimes being involved in our kids' lives so much more than we had means that our kids are gonna see us in all of our glory, in our good moments and our bad moments. I think for me, I don't know about y'all, but for the difference for me is that I absolutely own it when I'm not at my best with my kids. I will definitely come back later, apologize, own it, and have a different conversation where my mom or my dad wouldn't apologize for shit. There was like no self-reflection there. It was like, shut the fuck up. Like, <laughs> no, no, don't bug me. Uh, you're the kid. I'm the parent. It's like, shh. Um, so I think we are doing better, my friends. So don't let any of these trends get to you I know or just think use them as a guide for where is it that I need to grow more where is it that I might need more support where is it that I can make better connections with my kids where is it that I might be holding on to pain or limiting beliefs that don't belong to me anymore that I need to really let go of so that I can be open for these amazing experiences 
with my children that are waiting for you because your kids are awesome. You're awesome. So remember that, my Gen X friends. Love you.